What's up guys, John Hammond here. Welcome back to another YouTube video. Uh, still creating a C++ program for the tic-tac-toe game that we were asked about. And uh, we just created some functionality where we can really let the player uh, actually interact with the program. It'll ask for a turn, where do you want to place your move, etc. Um, and we can play tic-tac-toe, but it doesn't detect when we actually win. So that's the next functionality we want to go ahead and add in, is actually being able to determine when someone has won the game. So let's jump in. We've got everything kind of wrapped and bundled in this game class, in this game object. So let's go ahead and create another function here. Um, we'll do this uh, void because it, it doesn't need to return anything, but we can just check for wins. And simple thing for us, let's just, if someone does win the game, uh, display it out to the screen and then exit, close the game. Because we're just trying to showcase some of the concepts here. It doesn't need to be a fully fleshed out, incredible tic-tac-toe game. Um, <laughs> all right, let's create a uh, kind of like a database or a group of move sets or possible combinations on how to win tic-tac-toe. Um, so this isn't too crazy, right? Because there aren't aren't too many ways you can win tic-tac-toe. Sure, there are a lot of combinations if you actually consider the order and the procedure in the way that someone like finishes the game and actually wins, but at the end of the day, the actual setup or like the positioning of a solution is kind of easy. There are there are only eight possible ways you can win, right? You can go across one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So there's there's those three, and if you want to go down, one, four, seven, two, five, eight, three, six, nine, okay, another three, so we've got six right now, and you can have the diagonal positions, one, five, nine, and seven, five, three. So, eight ways to win. <laughs> At least eight arrangements. Certainly not possible combinations. Um, that would be much, much more, but there are eight arrangements that would win the game. So let's create that as a list and loop through them and see, are any of those arrangements met? Have we, have we found the criteria for someone to be uh, in that setup? So the way that I did this was I actually set up um, um, an array here of strings. So I had to have them be constants, and I don't remember why, but I'm sure one of you smart people can tell me, probably in the comments or something, or we'll run into it later. So we knew that there were eight possible ways to win, so let's define them just like this. We knew we had one, two, three. We knew we had four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, et cetera. I don't think I have to say all of these out loud for you. <laughs> I'm sure you get it. Sure, you understand. No, let's do our diagonals. Five, nine and seven five three. Okay, great. So those are all the arrangements that could constitute someone winning the game of tic tac toe. So now let's loop through all of these possible winning move sets. Loop through. Whoa, I can't type. Oh my lord. So let's do this with a simple for loop. Let's just say for int i equals zero, i is less than eight in this case, and i plus plus. Okay. So let's try and try and keep track as to whether or not there has been a winner or we've actually detected someone has won. And now we want to actually kind of use each of these values here as an index or a position in our grid. So since we want to be able to check, okay, is there the same character at each of these? Is there the same um, either an X or an O at every single one of these? So the way we have to keep track of that is by determining what was the previous value that we saw. What was the previous um, character at the last position we looked at? Was it an X? Was it an O? Or was it even just a number? So we'll keep, tra we'll keep track of that, sorry, as a previous grid or something, or whatever you really want to call it. And I'll just set this to zero right now because there aren't, there, and there's never going to be a zero in the grid. We go from one to nine and we have X's and O's, but uh, that's all. Okay, so now we can 
go ahead and extract the winning move that we're looking at. And this might be why I had to use a constant here. Um, because when I try and extract it out of the array of winning moves based off that index, you do need to have it set up as just a string that you're able to read since this is a constant when it's entered into the source code like that. So now I've got the winning move. And now that that's selected, now that that's kind of uh, kept track of inside of our loop, now we can loop through all the characters in that winning move. One, two, three, four, five, six, et cetera, et cetera. So we know that that's always going to be three characters long. So we can do another for int index equals zero, index is less than three, and index plus plus. I'm using index here because I already used i as my iterator in the other loop. Easy peasy. So now we can go ahead and figure out the character that we're looking at. Since we're using a numeric iterator here, um, we want to actually use that to select and index what character we're looking at in our winning moves. So equals winning move indexed at that index. Cool, so now we've got that character. So let's find the integer form of that so we can actually determine where is that location in the grid. Remember, we had to do that with the integer so we could determine the proper row and column. Um, and then actually extract it out of our grid array. So we can do that by going that magic trick we had tried earlier, like entered number equals the character we're looking at minus the character of zero. So it puts it as an integer. And now the grid space, or that actual zero based grid coordinate is going to be that number minus one. Remember, it has to be minus one because that is one based, one through nine, but we need to be zero based if we want to actually determine the row and column. Int row grid space divided by three, or really grid size, I suppose. I should be using grid size for all of these that I'm using three. And the column is the modulus here. Okay, cool. So now we can determine what character is at that position in the grid. So our grid character, our grid based off of the row in the column. Great. So now we have to test what character we're looking at relative to where, what we were looking at previously. So our first iteration happens when previous grid is equal to zero. So if the previous grid if that previous character we're looking at is equal to zero, we know this is the first iteration, so we should just set the previous grid character to what we're looking at just now, because there is nothing that could have came before this, so this has to be the start, right? Good. Otherwise, we need to determine, okay, is this previous grid character that we've seen in the last iteration, is that equal to what the grid character is now? Keep in mind, this else statement is crucial to this, because if you don't have this else statement, this if statement will execute, and then this if will follow. But it won't execute if we keep our else in here. So only one of these things can happen in the case of the first iteration. So else if the previous grid character is equal to the grid character we're looking at right now. And if that's the case, we can keep moving, because maybe this is a winner. Maybe someone has is just about to win. But if it's a different character, like a series of X's has been cut off by a zero, or it's been cut off by a one or two or whatever other, other number is necessary in the grid, then okay, this person did not win. This is this is not a winning move set yet. So we will break out of our loop and say this is a false. It's not a winner. Because remember, we're assuming everything is a winner if it successfully gets through this loop. If all of the characters are the same based off of our previous gear grid character is equal to the current grid character mentality. So, okay. Now, outside of this inner loop, because after we've tested one winning move, if that winning move is a success, if winner is still set to true, then... Literally, someone just won. Someone, someone's won. So we can just say out on the screen, hey, we have a winner. Take our pretty, pretty asterisk stars, say that there, and then we can just print f 
looks like whatever character we've just seen won. Congratulations. So that will be able to handle when we have both our playing, like our X character, the player, and the computer, our, our O player. And previous get rid will be um, the character that we've been looking at all this time. So let's exit with return code of zero, and then we can break out of our loop here, break out of our for loop. Okay. So now we can use this check for wins function whenever we want to display the grid out in our game loop. So after we ask for our turn, we can show the grid and we can check for wins. If we want to do it, check for wins just at the very start. That way it will generate the grid the first time. It'll check for wins. Obviously there won't be any wins at the very start of the game. It'll show the grid, it'll ask for our turn and it will enter our turn. Um, and then if we won, Okay, now it'll check for wins, et cetera, et cetera, because this loop is what will happen over and over again. If you wanted to check for wins after you display the grid, you can do that or before. Um, let's probably do it before or after whatever. We can even show the grid after we ask our turn if we needed to duplicate that stuff. And that will happen once we add the computer player turn if we move into that pretty soon. So whatever, let's just go ahead and run this, I guess. Compile this. Hopefully no errors. Cool, no errors. Let's play one, five, nine. And hey, we have a winner. X1, congratulations. So I did that in order, right? But I could just have easily have done like um, seven, three, five. We still have a winner, even though I was out of order in the way that we programmed it, because remember, this is just the arrangement of positions. As long as there's a, a sequence of this character being the same in all of those positions, it realizes, okay, someone has won. It doesn't matter what order they went in there, or the chronological sequence of them playing those moves. Um, so this is handy for detecting a win, but if we wanted to use this mentality for making a smart computer AI player, or an actual, like, enemy or computer to play against, um, we might have to reverse this loop to check, okay, is the pl is the actual human player going to win in the sequence of 1-2, or are they going to win in the sequence of 3-2, leaving that last corner as their, their victory spot? Can the computer just jump in front of it and make sure that the player doesn't win if they detect, okay, the player is about to win? And that's an interesting thing we can move into in the next video. But... Right now, we've got functionality to determine whether or not someone has won the game. So, 1, 5, 9, um, 7, uh, 4, 1. Awesome. And no matter how we get our sequence of uh, 3 across, 3 down, or diagonal, we win. We can detect when we win. Cool. Simple tic-tac-toe. Uh, let's get into adding a computer enemy, a little AI uh, to play against in the, in the next video. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you're enjoying these. Uh, if you do like this, please like the video. Uh, if you got something to say, tell me what I suck at. Tell me what I can do better. Uh, tell me how you're solving these problems. Please leave a note in the comments. Uh, if you're feeling up for it, subscribe. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you're enjoying these. I'll see you in the next video.